I hear you. I feel you. And this is one of my favorite character class combinations to play the classic fighter slash wizard. The ability to use sword and sorcery in the game. But in Neverwinter Nights, how does it play out? What are those action points? What is that tactica checklist we should build to be aware of just how this character combination works so we don't find ourselves a number of chapters in to the quest and things aren't working out? Or worse, we become frustrated. Now, the great thing about Neverwinter Nights is the fact that you can multi-class, you've got the prestige classes, you can build out a lot of interesting combinations, and we, we see this on the various boards. You want to build a Jedi-type character, you can do that. But being aware that Neverwinter Nights is based on the D&D 3.5, 3.x rule set, and within that rule set, since it's a digital game, digital implementation, you have even less flexibility. Neverwinter Nights is very much a min-max game. It's very much about the stats. Plus 5, plus 10, plus 15, plus 20. Stacking damage, stacking ability to hit, stacking modifiers to make the DC, the difficulty check, as difficult as possible. Stacking armor classes. Anytime this doesn't keep up as the game levels up and as you encounter more powerful encounters... You need another way to deal with it. Otherwise, you're going to gas out really, really quick or you're going to become really, really frustrated. So with that, there are a number of elements that just don't really align playing a fighter slash wizard. That doesn't mean it's a hopeless class. Uh, Again, that just means we have to be really, really aware of how the two sync up, how the two work, and being aware of what that opportunity is when we face those encounters and we don't have the max attributes, the max stats. So let's jump in and let's bounce around back and forth between the positive and the negative. Because again, this is one of my favorite character combinations to play from the role-playing perspective. And I have to say, having been through a number of the modules and the expansions with various character classes, it is possible... Can you win a role-playing game? It is possible to win the game with any character class, any combination. But some are easier than others. So the first aspect is you get to pull in a variety of magical items in the game. And I'm not going to name any items. I'm not going to give away any spoilers. But with the exception of the rogue or the ability to unlock the use magic device skill, the fact that you are a fighter allows you to pull in various weapons, various armor, various gauntlets, various boots and belts and cloaks. And on the opposite side, being an arcane class, being a wizard, you get to pull in various staves, rods, wands, cloaks. On that side, there will be very, very few, very, very few magic items that you are not able to use. An example, aka druid or aka bard type items, because you don't have to use magic device. But what this means is playing it over all of the modules and all the expansions, it's it's just a fun class to play because you get to experiment with cool magic items. You get to experiment with different combinations. And when you get kind of tired of one thing, then you could easily switch to another. So I, I enjoy that diversity and I enjoy the ability to be able to use, potentially use most everything that I find. Now let's jump into the primary advantage you are going to have a better than average pool of hit points for the class if as opposed to if you're just straight wizard by dipping into the wizard or stacking into wizard levels you will have less overall hit points compared to a fighter absolutely but you've still got a decent amount with the fighter as a base that combined with toughness That combined with potentially, we have to look at spell failure, we're going to make a note and talk about that, potentially with armor means you are still pretty survivable. You're pretty survivable. And that's that's useful for certain encounters, that's useful for not having to time potions exactly or, or get into a potion loop. A potion loop is where you're getting beat on and you've got a follower that's attacking And uh, the primary monster has the aggro on you, and it's hitting you, it's hitting you, it's hitting you. And you can't escape, 
but you're literally sitting there clicking healing potion, healing potion, healing potion. It's nice to have that, that pool, which takes you up above and up a little bit higher. Now, the main disadvantage, or I should say the main thing that we need to begin to navigate is the fact that your stats are diluted in multiple places. Fighters want to have constitution. Every class is good with con, but they want constitution. And fighters want strength. Dexterity is nice, um, but we can augment that with heavier suits of armor and certain magic items to boost up our dexterity. The wizard, on the other hand, intelligence is the primary. Absolutely intelligence. And we can't skimp out on that intelligence because we need the ability to, first of all, to be able to cast the appropriate spell levels. We want to be able to cast up to ninth level. And also the DC check, the difficulty check to beat certain things, we want that number as high as possible. So your stats, when you primarily divide them, are going to have to go into strength. They're going to have to go into intelligence and they're going to have to go into constitution. Constitution, we want it to be as high as possible because we want those hit points. We're not going to go in with a 10, but that is the primary distribution. That is what we have to look at. So generally speaking, when I roll with this type of class, my focus is on intelligence for two reasons. I want access to lots of skills. The wizard, just based on the ability, primary skills and cross-class skills, based on the intelligence, the points that you get starting and per level, you're going to have a wide base of skills. I want that, and I want the ability, of course, to be able to cast spells at the appropriate spell level and, and have a somewhat decent DC check. I'm never going to have the max. I'm going to be always a little bit behind, but intelligence is important. Second to that is... Strength, plus one, plus two. I'm never going to get plus three or plus four base before we add on magic items, simply because I don't have the points and I can't dilute it. And then, of course, constitution. I like charisma. I like wisdom. Wisdom for opening up other dialogues. Charisma for um, convincing NPCs and that role-playing aspect. Charisma, I can get away with it. Being just base 10, simply because you're going to have the skill points that you can dump into persuade, intimidate, and other things to open up those dialogue options. I'm going to miss out a little bit on wisdom, but can't have absolutely everything. But you're going to be stretched. Now we get into the fact that casting spells, you're going to be wearing some sort of armor. And I'm never going to be able to eliminate the spell casting to zero, arcane failure, right? Depending if it's light, medium, and heavy. There are certain suits in the game. There are certain ways to bring that modifier down to where it's acceptable. Um, for a frame of reference, if you've ever played Baldur's Gate and we play the Wild Mage, uh, the Wild Mage is this like arcane caster that has the ability to, to empower spells and do some really unique things. But there's a 5% chance or X percent chance that every time you cast, just strange stuff happens. It's like a random table of stuff. You just kind of live with it. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. Arcane failure is an implementation of D&D 3.5, wearing suits of armor. I can minimize it, but I can't eliminate it. And certainly I could eliminate it by not wearing armor, but I'm giving up a lot by playing a fighter and not being able to wear armor. And I'm not just talking about armor class itself, because that we can augment, while I'll never have the armor class of a true wizard, excuse me, a true fighter, I can augment that with invisibility, um, displacement, disbursement, um, mage armor, various spells that will get my armor class up there or give it a chance to conceal or completely miss me in the first place. So that's that's kind of the, the balance out on that. But there's also, no spoilers, a number of fighter-based armors that have some really, really cool abilities, and I want to be able to wear them. So I have to accept that arcane failure. That said, I'm probably going to stick to lights and specialized select mediums, so it, at, least it's, at least it's livable. At least I can live with it. Although you pop off some higher spells and it fails, that's that's just kind of um, where we are and how it is. So tactically, tactically, what are we going to do? We're going to look for 
damage spells, and we're going to look at buffs. The damage spells, uh, let's look at, say, the lower levels. We're looking at stuff like Magic Missile, and we're looking at stuff like uh, Displacement and Ways to Conceal Yourself to add that. Arcane Protection. The way the fighter slash mage slash wizard works is when I engage the... When I engage the monsters, normally as a fighter, unless I'm playing a ranged fighter, I'm going to run up there, right? I'm going to try and run up there, get positioning based on whatever obstacles are in the way, you know, tables or other things if I'm outside, and and just try to start beating on those monsters, beating on those encounters. The way it works with a fighter slash wizard is I buff first, and the buffs will last a good amount of time, and then when I encounter, I let them run to me. And I hit them with Magic Missile. I hit them with Fireball. I hit them with Lightning Bolt. I I bring them down. I weaken them. And now when we close, then I utilize my fighter abilities in terms of of weapons and fighting and being able to make power attacks and knockdowns and things of that nature. That's vastly different than a wizard, which a wizard is I try to hit you from a distance. And if you close, get close to me, I, I run away. And I'm trying to block you with summons and henchmen. So that's the general tactica of um, being able to hit from a distance, you know, ice storm from a distance if you're midway through the first, uh, the first in the series, and then let them come to you and then start attack and engage. Now, the question is, of course, higher level abilities and special abilities, uh, we're, you're never going to go fully equal fighter slash wizard in terms of leveling up. You are going to want to have higher wizard levels than fighter levels simply because you want to unlock the higher level abilities and the special abilities of the wizard as opposed to the fighter because they're just not going to have the base. You're not going to have the full attack base and the full amount of feats that a fighter has because you're going to have to spend certain feats on your wizard class. The feats that I recommend, and, and now we're getting into role play a little bit, Empower spells, meta spells, meta magic. If I didn't have to dilute my feet pool with fighter abilities, absolutely I would be taking those. Absolutely I would be taking crafting. What I'm going to rely on instead, of course, is spell penetration. Absolutely, one and two. I'm going to rely on toughness. I'm going to rely on power attack, cleave, and various other fighter attributes if I can get the strength up and and go in that direction. I'm primarily going to look to utilize my fighter attributes as opposed to my wizard type attributes. Okay, when we get into trouble with this class is the fact that you're never going to be as strong as a fighter. You're never going to be as strong as a pure wizard. But tactically, you're going to have the advantage of being able to buff being able to engage at a distance with spells and summons, and then when they get close, be able to fight with a fighter and utilize that from that perspective. You are going to have to rely on potions and certain clicky magic items because they're going to be used more just to fill in those gaps in certain encounters where you are undergunned. You are underpowered. But essentially, this class is looking and saying, when is the time to engage from the fighter perspective? When is the time to engage from the wizard perspective? A fun class to play. A lot of fun for the role-playing, but for the pure min-max, it is a challenging class to play because the two do not mesh up. You are dividing your attributes into different pools that are never going to be 18, 19, 20, or higher based naturally as you level up. We're going to supplement them with magic items, but that's the challenge, that's the checklist that we need to look at and navigate.